Hey guys, so somebody asked me, what do you think about changing programming languages during a career? This is par for the course, by the way. In my own career, going back decades, I have written commercial software in about nine languages, give or take. So I'm not talking about the dabbling languages. I'm actually being paid or made money with languages. So over my career, it's about nine languages. So changing languages is normal. You should expect it, in fact. The good thing is once you know how to program, going from you know Python to JavaScript to Java to C Sharp to whatever, TypeScript, is not a big deal. Once you know how to program, you can learn a new language in a few days, you know, meaning being productive. Why? Because all these languages are based on the same basic principles. So he continues, I started as a front-end developer, then became a full-stack developer working with PHP, Recently, I was looking for a new role as a PHP backend engineer, but after a month, I haven't found any good opportunities. A month is not terribly long. You may have to look for jobs for a little while, but anyway. On the other hand, I now have an opportunity at a very large company, a C-sharp.net developer. They build software for airlines, so they don't use the very latest technologies. Very common, by the way. Uh, but rather they, uh, excuse me, but rather a mix of legacy and modern tools. Their stack is ASP.NET Core, ASP.NET, MVC, EF6, and SOAP. SOAP. Hmm. Uh, here's my LinkedIn profile. I'd like, you, I'd like you to check or connect with me. Uh, so there you go. That's the story. So, uh, yeah, changing languages is par for the course. I would encourage you to do so because the more you know, uh, as I say, the more you learn, the more you earn, right? More languages you know, more technologies you know, the more opportunities you're going to have. Do not become a language zealot, meaning don't become married to a particular language. This is not marriage. These are just tools. If you can find a job, if you have the opportunity in csharp.net and you're comfortable, you think you could do it and they want to hire you, I would say go for it. You can't lose. Learning something new is, in fact, in the early 90s when I was cutting my teeth as a young nerdling, that's when I had all my hair, pre-Ruby, full of hair, the top developers would always look for new jobs based on a big, one of the major criteria was whether or not they were going to learn something new. They went to jobs where they, they were going to learn something new. That was key. If they weren't going to learn something new, they were much less interested in the job because we knew back then, if you knew more stuff, you just had more opportunity, you were, or you, you were worth much more. So if you take this csharp.net job, interestingly enough, by learning csharp.net and seeing how the whole .net world does their thing, your PHP skills will get better. Mindset is everything. I was just having a conversation with somebody who's uh, joining the mentoring, my mentoring program. He asked me a question near the end of the consult is, do you have anything on mindset? Well, of course. The very first course in the program is my Lizard Wizard course. It's a strange, funny sounding name, but once you do the course, you understand why I called it Lizard Wizard. Because if you master your primitive lizard brain, you become a wizard. You become a wizard. You become a master of your own environment. That's so important, so important. If you want to be a professional developer, you have to um, you have to become a professional. Becoming a professional is about mindset. It's about positioning yourself. Coding is the least important aspect, in my opinion, when it comes to being a professional developer. And unlike all those YouTube experts out there, I've actually been developing apps for decades. I've actually taken apps to market. I've actually developed apps for multiple publicly traded companies, uh, from uh, being a junior to architecture. So I understand the game very, very well. So all the doomers out there are going, AI, AI, that's bullshit, man. The AI is not killing the jobs. What's killing the jobs is that you got trained by people who I've had some big name Big name YouTube but Udemy people tell me they never wrote code for real. And they've made a lot of money doing that because they, they've, they've uh, presented the shiny bubble, bobble, the shiny uh, 
uh, thing that, you know, build this Twitter app with this or do that, you know. It's kind of like thinking that you're going to become a great fighter if you can do a jumping front kick. You know, that's, I remember, I remember when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I was impressed with the guy who could do the jumping front kick really well. Or they do the board breaking, ka -chow! And the board breaking, everybody, ooh, he can break boards. That means he's a good fighter. Any trained fighter now knows that's, that's BS. Like now, we're much more sophisticated when it comes to understanding combat sports because of MMA. But back in the day, mm, people could get fooled by the board breakers. Oh, you go, my God, he must be deadly. He breaks boards. Hey, if you don't know me, I'm Uncle Steph. I mentor people in the ways of software development. I've been doing it since the 90s. If you want to learn from me, the basics, I got basic courses for you there. If you want a full interactive mentoring program with support form, etc., links below. And if you want to consult, links below, etc., and so forth. If you want to get in shape, links below. <laughs> we'll talk soon.